can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cured. I feel good. Good morning, everybody. I know this has been a challenging time, but one bonus, you're probably spending a lot more time with your family and loved ones. Well, this morning, we are dedicating our entire show to positive stories born of the coronavirus threat. And we begin with an amazing woman. Do you give your money on behalf of elevating others, or do you prefer to give your time? Well, a Sussex woman is doing both, enlisting in an effort to help neighbors cope with the ever-changing threat of COVID-19. Heather Windsor reports for duty. I got lots of troops for the kids. She's not in the military, but her mission is vital. Her weapon, a giving heart. The only treat that I got for the kids that has sugar in it is St. Patrick's Day cookies. Heather is serving her country in a different way. I just wanted to give back to the community that um, I love so much. So, and to show my kids a good example. She's helping neighbors combat the coronavirus crisis. Well, it's devastating and we have to stay in our homes. We have to wash our hands 20 times a day. Her goal, be there. She drafted herself for errands like shopping, babysitting, even house cleaning. I wanna take a little bit of pressure away from them so that it makes their life a little bit easier so they can care more about um, the quality time that they're having with their children. Windsor reached out on social media. Her service is free. She even pays for the groceries. Heather, let me understand this. You are paying for these people's groceries and you're also delivering them? Yes. What a gift. That's just me paying it forward. We meet Heather outside the Sendix Meadowbrook in Waukesha, and yes, we abide by the six-foot rule. Because I've gotten numerous messages from other people saying, what can I do to help? How can I help you out? Knowing that I can't be running around because I work all day. She sprung into action. She picked out groceries for a man she's never met. Everything is healthy as best as I could. I'm the fourth oldest of 16. I have eight brothers and seven sisters. Grew up in New Berlin, Wisconsin. So I'm very used to being around children. Heather, a real estate agent with First Weber, has been a broker for 20 years. The divorced mother of three knows COVID-19 must be attacked on all fronts. I hope I'm inspiring others, especially by doing this. I hope I got everything on their list. We follow Heather on her way to the Waukesha home of Charles Miller. She's about to meet the widowed dad for the first time. He has six adopted kids with special needs. For example, the one guy is going to need a kidney transplant, and the other guy is sickle cell and other chronic illnesses. Another girl is deaf and wears cochlear implants. And uh, ironically, she plays the clarinet. <laughs> you see, Miller's late wife dedicated herself to helping children. Well, I got married in 2011. I met my wife, Annie Harmony, and she was a social worker. She had over 70 foster kids, and she was highly trained with um, medical needs and emotional needs and the whole foster care system. Sadly, his wife died of cancer two years ago. And we were married about a month, and we found out she had cancer. When we were got married, she had four of her own that she had adopted. And uh, then we adopted two more for a total of six. And right after that, she really took ill and passed away. I just had some big shoes to fill, learning um, really everything she knew about raising these children and their special needs. Miller, a former Air Force officer, teaches at St. John's Academy. He credits officer training school with giving him tools to be a solo dad to his large family. My officer training has really uh, helped me out. It gave me strength and perseverance and um, thinking critically, things like that. It's not one I would have chosen, but not when, it, when it's you're, the cards you're dealt, you embrace it and you, you play the best hand you can play. And for the Miller family, Heather is an angel. You're a godsend. <laughs> truly, I, I, truly, truly. I'm just amazed at people's generosity. They don't know me and, and they help more than um, more than I can imagine, just uh, being very generous with their time and their resources. Last year I suffered two very aggressive uh, shoulder tears and I was out for almost a year and I needed help. Um, so I, I put a, an ad through Nextdoor, um, the app there, and a lot of people stepped up. I said one day I'm going to pay it forward and I'm going to cry soon here, but I'm going to pay it forward to Charles and his family. And I'm really looking forward to um, uh, hope, hopefully a lifelong relationship knowing that uh, I've impacted his family. 
you know, in the months to come because it will be months. After delivering and paying for the groceries, Windsor even babysat for Charles Miller. It's just seeing the smiles on the kids' faces and the parents just feeling so relieved. One woman helping battle an invisible enemy. When this health war is over, any victory must salute those in the trenches. People like Heather Windsor, elite members of a volunteer citizen force armed solely with compassion. I love putting smiles on people's faces. Um, I don't do this for the notoriety. I do it because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to make other people happy. And it's almost like a domino effect. You know, you, you make one person happy, they're gonna make another person happy. You know, it's contagious. What a blessing Heather is. And check out this Facebook post from another family Heather helped out. Nicole of Heartland wrote on Facebook, the outpouring of support for what Heather is doing is incredible. Heather is an angel. Having her reach out to calm my nerves and help my boys during this unsettling time was a godsend. Heather could not get any better. There's also a GoFundMe page for Charles Miller and his six adopted kids with special needs. We put that link at tmj4.com. And if you'd like to help Heather, you can give to the Heather Winzo Fund through Venmo. So both well-deserving. Social distancing has had a huge impact on small businesses, but owners are adapting. Some people are finding safe ways to thrive. Here's Sean Gallagher. The Sherman Phoenix is usually bustling with life, but it's eerily quiet right now because of coronavirus. But at least one business owner here is trying to get creative to make sure he can stay afloat. If this is a longer one, put that in the top. Truman McGee owns Funky Fresh Spring Rolls, and they depend on foot traffic coming into Sherman Phoenix. We get business from people coming into our business, so finding more creative ways to get our product out has been the new, the new mission. That creativity led him to start freezing his spring rolls for people to have at home. He's also delivering more than 40 orders right to his customers' front doors to show his appreciation. Hey, how are you? Doing? People will not forget how you how you treated them during this time. So it's important for me to just treat people amazing during this time. Truman says what he's giving, he's getting back tenfold by customers who don't want to see his business suffer. I would feel bad. I mean, when you see someone kind of start from the beginning and grow something that implements the community, gives back to the community, you want to try to help facilitate that for them. So to lose that would be detrimental. Sasha Harris has been buying Funky Fresh Spring Rolls for a long time. She knows how valuable these orders are right now. So whatever we can do, small or large, to support each other, I think this is a time when you have to come together. We had uh, close to 10 employees that we were um, essentially responsible for. Something like this happens where it could potentially affect their, their family. So for me, that was so important to be able to keep going for them as well because they got people depending on them. In Sherman Park, Sean Gallagher, TMJ4 News. You have to love that. And we have put a link to restaurants offering delivery, carry out, and curbside pickup. Just go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group. A Milwaukee landlord has reduced the rent for his tenants who may be struggling to make ends meet. Rebecca Clough has that heartwarming story. John Zutz is asking for just a simple thing. He hopes his tenants either pay their bills or help the community. A Milwaukee landlord knows people in his community are facing less work hours, even layoffs because of the coronavirus pandemic. So he wants to help. I realize that the that there was really the bottom of the economy that was really taking the beating and so i, I know my tenant i have two tenants that live upstairs and i realized that they could have been affected by this and so i offered them a break on their rent john zutz is only asking for a hundred dollars for the month of april from his tenants he knows this could make a huge difference in the lives of his renters i gave them an option the option was if if you're in financial problems use it for yourself if you're not in financial options spend it in the neighborhood a welcome and appreciated deal for his renters what do you think it was super great uh totally took me by surprise uh um, really great, unexpected surprise. Ryan Keene rents from John. He says so far he's still going to work, but he doesn't know if that will be the case for long. It's just a day by day kind of thing. If that would uh, shut down, it would be uh, really nice to have 
that break. John hopes he becomes one of many landlords who offers this help. Reporting in Milwaukee, Rebecca Clough, TMJ4 News. John, thank you for your compassion. Wonderful people doing great things. And still to come, when words fail, music speaks. A local man using his talents to help fellow artists. Welcome back. It can be hard to find the bright side in a time like this, but there are many. Delaney Bry was at the Hunger Task Force in West Dallas, and she tells us how volunteers are teaming up to help. In West Dallas, Hunger Task Force is hard at work. We're building boxes in the morning. We're building boxes in the afternoon. Those boxes hold about a week's worth of food and are being built by volunteers like Kelsey Burke. I am a teacher, so our school closed. This was the first week of being closed. Um, and I was just trying to think of something to do while we figured out how the rest of the school year was gonna work. Keeping their distance while serving the community, Kelsey says she feels safe volunteering. For me personally, I know that I'm not within the most vulnerable like age groups or I don't have any immune compromise issues. You know, if anyone needs to be out here doing stuff, it should be the ones who are healthier and less at risk. Executive Director Sherry Tussler knows this hunger relief only happens because of volunteers. All of our pantries, literally every one of them is staffed by volunteers. Volunteerism is critical to hunger relief, and so if you're thinking about volunteering, now's the time to go to the website and click that button. The boxes being prepared today are in preparation. Should food pantries close and Hunger Task Force has to serve the public directly, if you need assistance immediately, there are options. They need to go to the Hunger Task Force website because we are updating an interactive map. We're also going out to our pantries and programs and making sure that what is on the map is real and true. There are others who have bigger needs and uh, bigger concerns than we do. You know, it's good and we're here and we're just like trying to get some good stuff done. Because the Hunger Task Force wants to serve the community in the best and healthiest way possible, they're asking for monetary donations rather than personal food items. Reporting in West Alice, Delaney Bry, TMJ4 News. And thanks to all the volunteers, and if you are interested in donating, visit TMJ4.com and click on this story for more information. A Milwaukee man turned his 46th birthday into a way to help local restaurants. As Katie Crowther shows us, he raised nearly $28,000 in less than four days. CJ Krofchak created the SOS Save Our Spots fundraiser through GoFundMe. He and his wife Julie started it with a donation of $4,600 in honor of his 46th birthday. They couldn't believe what happened next. I mean, even in this time when every dollar matters and, you know, we're going to be facing a lot of people out of work, people gave until it hurt. And it's still going. I've been overwhelmed by the generosity of our community. CJ says it shows how important our local restaurants are as gathering places, making our city more vibrant. Many of these restaurants were thinking about record years. And then in a moment, they go from, you know, looking forward to a great year to fighting for their survival. This is not a solution. This is just a bridge, right? We need real government intervention. We need real help. And all this money is designed to do is to try to keep a couple of places in the game and afloat long enough so when the cavalry ar arrives, and I hope it does, that there's still something to save. Six restaurants will be getting cash this week, including Tandem, which started offering free community meals for pickup this week amid the coronavirus pandemic. He hopes to keep helping more. Try to keep it to a handful of spots because they need thousands of dollars. Hundreds of dollars isn't going to matter. So I had to make some really difficult choices and picked spots that I felt like either because of their history or their relationship with the communities in which they reside or just their excellence, just the things that they make are so rare and unique. Um, so I picked six places. I'm hoping to get them all $5,000 this week. What started as a small act of kindness, turning into a big showing of love. What a blessing. The local musicians are feeling the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Tony Atkins talked to one local artist who is taking his live shows to a new platform to help others. 
Gabriel Sanchez longs for the day he plays a show again. He leads a band with quite the following, covering one of the most prolific artists of all time. My role with the Prince Experience, I play Prince. I play guitar, drums, and keyboards. Gabriel's shows draw quite the crowd, crowds he might not see for a while. And as the COVID-19 pandemic continues, he spends much of his time in isolation. I understand why, I mean, it has to be like that right now, but um, we're getting hit hard. Gabriel says local full-time artists like himself are taking a financial hit. It's done some serious damage. So he's improvising. I'm gonna do this weekend. I'm um, doing concert series starting here in my house. He started an online concert series featuring guest artists. People watching at home can give tips through Vimo, Cash App, or others. That money will go to other band members and local artists now out of work. We need to start thinking of what else we could do to, to get some income in. Don't have to be rich to be my girl. How'd you feel just now? That felt good. That felt good. <laughs> Gabriel admits it's nothing like the real thing, but he says he's looking forward to playing again. I hope it becomes a big wave of everybody doing this. You know, I mean, I think that would be great if people can start choosing to hop on to different shows throughout the night. Because he says at times like these, when words fail, music speaks. In Milwaukee, Tony Atkins, TMJ4 News. Got to get Gabriel back on stage. Music to our ears. Well, inspiring people everywhere, and we have much more. I'm going to show you free activities for people of all ages. Plus, we're going to go to a local community where dinosaurs are on parade. Welcome back. If you're hanging out in the house with your kids, Friendship Circle of Wisconsin's Facebook page features live content. There's kids yoga, story time, even a music class. Julia Fellow talked to parents taking advantage of these free online classes. How old are your kids? I have four kids, thank God. Um, there's eight, six, five, and two. Nine. Oh, I'm sorry, nine. <laughs> Leah Stein's four children are keeping her on her toes as she works to keep them all busy in their Bayside home. One kid's learning, the other kid's coloring on the wall. And then when one kid is like actually focused, the other kid is climbing up a chimney. I mean, there's always action here, always. Which is why it is so helpful the global branch of Friendship Circle came together to make sure children and their families are still feeling connected. The nonprofit provides friendship to someone with special needs. Each day on Facebook Live, there will be activities like yoga, music, and crafts. We have special educators talking about what to do with, you know, different situations. There's anxiety. Sari Shovers is taking advantage of story time with her four-year-old Adam, who made sure we all know. Because I read stories. As you can see, she's got her hands full with her one-year-old Josh as well. It's been really great having there be like different story times and different music times. We're definitely trying to keep a schedule and keep a routine, so that's pretty helpful. <laughs> They hope the classes help keep people at home, like the governor and others have asked us to do, so we can again do these things face to face sometime soon. So we're not bored. I mean, we're going crazy, but we're not bored, that's for sure. <laughs> Hopefully we can stop the spread and, you know, move on with our normal lives. The Friendship Circle of Wisconsin's Facebook page plans to host more live events on Tuesday. This includes karate, science, art, and Zumba. You can learn more by clicking on this story at TMJ4.com. Reporting in Fox Point, Julia Fellow, TMJ4 News. Awesome, great activities. Julia, thank you. Mr. Rogers said it best, look for the helpers. And that's our focus in this week's Four Positives. Milwaukee County first responders put out a call for help and you responded. They needed protective gear like face masks, gloves, hand sanitizer. There's a drop off site at the Tommy Thompson Center at State Fair Park and luckily there have been a steady stream of donations. The Department of Transportation is spreading kind words to people still on the job. You might notice this DOT signs all over the interstate. They salute truck drivers and grocery store employees, and we want to thank you for helping all of us. 
and happy birthday to 100-year-old Grace Makovic. Friends and family celebrated her milestone at Village at Manor Park in Greenfield. They wore birthday hats, carried signs and gifts. Now, of course, because of our times, they weren't allowed to visit her in person, but through a window, they managed to make her day very special. And look at this, a Bayview community put on a parade, but forget the floats, everybody was wearing a dinosaur costume. They had to make sure they practiced social distancing, but they still had a good time getting outside and staying safe. When we return, I'll have my quote of the week. Don't go away. Every week I like to leave you with an inspirational quote. And this week we have one that is fitting during this international pandemic. It comes from British author J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame. Her quote, we are only as strong as we are united, as weak as we are divided. We appreciate your company this morning. Stay safe and stay positive.